Yeah, so I know there's probably a lot of questions about what happened with my dear friend traveling abroad and there is a lot more to the story than what I've talked about. But I will say that, uh, you know, I know that there's a lot of doubt when something like this happens. I mean, somebody going and talking to Satan, somebody hovering in the air and all the supernatural stuff going on. I gotta say, it's a surprise to me. Yeah, I'm as surprised as anyone by it all. But I'll tell you one thing, these are very interesting events. I think that they mean something, these events. And there's even more fascinating stuff that has happened since then. And I believe it has something to do with what I'm supposed to do here. And I know it's, you know, it's easy to make connections and see things as meeting up and they really don't, but uh, there are some very connective things happening here that I think are relative to something that I've been talking about at my channel and something that I was interested in teaching about, which is the coming of wisdom, the coming of Jerusalem. There is always concern in situations like this that you might be falling into the wrong crowd. You might be getting caught up in some kind of satanic distraction from salvation in Jesus Christ. And you know, this is always a fear. Uh, and when you are a Christian who is alert and who knows God's word, who knows the risks that are involved in things which are not immediately confirmable as being what you should do. There is a sense of fear that you might be heading down the wrong path. And one thing I can say with this is that, first of all, the people that are involved, I'll just tell you, my friend Anna, my friends, her lawyer, Mr. P, the master monk of this high temple and other people that are involved, the uh, law enforcement agent, Mr. Jones. I'll tell you something. I'm proud and I'm really grateful that I'm the kind of person that God would bring these people into my life. And um, these are outstanding people, and uh, I know that it's easy to have a hunky-dory feeling about people and then you find out something bad later. But uh, given all together what I've experienced with people, I think that uh, I'm really happy that I got these and this situation. And I am just, uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, really, excited and interested to see what all this is about even though I'm kind of the odd man out here I'm thousands thousands of miles away in a foreign country and all this drama is happening overseas but I am definitely interconnected to it all trust me on that I <laughs> because all the people that are there uh, they are they are involved with me and I am involved with them uh, on several issues. But let me just say that, uh, once again, that these folks are, are not people that are the wrong kind of people, even if they're not Christians. But several of them are. For instance, my friend Anna, she is a Christian. A Jesus Christ is a son of God come in the flesh and the blood of our salvation, Christian, and so is the law enforcement agent, Mr. Jones, who, while a little bit scary, is actually a very fine gentleman, and I'm pleased to know him, even if he might kick my ass someday. <laughs> but among men, let me tell you, these are, uh, these are interesting folks. These are honorable folks, 
and uh, it is um, it is quite interesting. And I will say something else now. I have not been able to sit down and grill said master monk of the high temple as I call him. But I did find out from Anna that he does in fact believe that Jesus Christ is the only son of the living God. That much I found out. And he is a Buddhist master monk of Thailand. And uh, there's uh, some more interesting events that have happened. And we're gonna see what the outcome is. Maybe it's tragedy, maybe it's sorrow, maybe it's a victory, maybe it's a joy. But whatever it is, I thank my God in heaven, Jehovah, and his son Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit for all these things that I've been given that are just an amazing experience. I say this often, but in life, there's a lot of things that you can't know who is who and what's what. But you make a decision about all the people in your life. You know, you may not know for sure about them, you may not know for sure about anything, but the people in your encounter, you make a decision about them. And then we'll see what the story is in the judgment. A very interesting observation of the law, law enforcement agent, Mr. Jones, that he made was that all of us lack a personal life, the, the four main people involved in terms of, uh, in terms of a romantic, uh, you might say involvement, you know, either marriage or a girlfriend or something. And uh, of course the interesting thing about that is Ina is an attractive woman, but she, like me, for various reasons of, you might say, spiritual development or hindrance or whatever it is, but we are, um, we are not, we are solitary and also uh, the, um, her lawyer, fine gentleman, Mr. P, Kun P, and uh, also uh, Mr. Jones. And uh, he made that interesting observation in that, um, and the reason we were talking about that was because our dear friend Anna is, feels, I think that we, we observed that, because she, she was really put on trial, and, and still is, in an amazing trial by fire, friends. You just can't believe how amazing this is. And uh, she was, um, at one point in her, in her anguish, she was saying that she didn't feel like anybody cared. And I observed that, you know, there's kind of a, a feeling of detachment, and especially for a woman, this is very hard. And uh, because you want a sense of family, you want a sense of connectedness. I believe that's one thing I talk about, the problem of being homeless, is, uh, is that feeling of disconnectedness. And she apparently um, was expressing that and feeling like, like no one cared. And I take some of the blame for that because I even admitted to her in a video that I didn't know how to express love. I don't know, I don't know how to express caring. And I think that she, she maybe wanted some of that from me. I, I don't know. I can't, I can't make any claim to know anything that's going on. But I'm just kind of shooting forward my thoughts in it. And so Mr. Jones made that observation. And then I agreed with him. And that made that also the point that maybe all of us who are kind of detached people for various reasons need to be her family because there's something clearly special all of us have witnessed and I realize that the world who hasn't seen this and who doesn't trust me or the people that are involved for the witness that was given about this don't it's maybe it's not as real for them what has happened that she actually disappeared for a whole week and to her it was like a strange dream and but to us we thought she was gone because the satanic attacks that were coming against the temple the high temple were uh, such that we thought she might be you know they they got to her because this evil witch showed up and um, it was really freaky what happened because she just disappeared and then when she came back literally 
hovering in the air and glowing with light coming out of her eyes and speaking with the thunderous voice of God. I don't know if you, if you all caught that, that her voice was mega loud, like, like she had a megaphone, okay? So like a goddess, man. And, and I still don't understand what, what all that is, but it sounded like, and seems like to me after I've reflected on it, this was somehow like the power of God in her. And it was like God living in her, or God was a part of her, and that's what was happening. I do not believe that it was demonic. Um, you know, I think I would have gotten a sense about that. I'm not saying it couldn't be, but if you knew Anna the way I know her, you would realize that chances are this is something that's not demonic. It is, this is coming from the Lord, and she believes that it's from the Lord but it's hard to tell. Everything is, as you know, uncertain. Last night I had a dream that I couldn't tell whether it was demonic or whether it was just my own desires playing out. I think the latter, but what it is is this, uh, I had this dream that I was in a situation of employment, but while well, I was in a place and but next to the place where I was, there was a film studio. Like I became aware that the in the, in the building, the section next door, was a a uh, movie special effects studio of some kind. And I've always dreamed about working in movies and working in the special effects. I applied for years and years, not realizing that I wasn't part of Satan's kingdom. See, at least that's my take on it. Maybe it's just that I didn't qualify, and chances are that I didn't get the job but that's my take on it that I was not part of Satan's kingdom and so in the dream I schmoozed my way into the studio and, and somehow found myself sitting down at their tables and this and that happened and I was you know talking to some people and yeah okay maybe I'll you know uh, put some stuff away or whatever you know because the hope in my heart was to kind of somehow ingratiate myself in there and, and try to get try to get the job, you know, try to get a job there. And finally, uh, at one point in the dream, this uh, stern woman who was like the owner or boss saw me and she said, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, uh, well, I was hoping you'd give me a job. And she says, uh, no. And I said, but I can, uh, I can uh, model any kind of face in 3D and, and with clay and everything. And she says, no, and get out. So I left, and uh, and actually I was I was depressed, and uh, so I I found myself walking on a road, and as I was walking along, I came across an old white pickup that had a lot of dirt on it, and I got into the pickup, and I remember looking out the window, and turning turning it on, turning the engine on, and uh, realizing, and I realized that it, it, you know I was thinking about how. Oh, it's nice. I got the new starting system installed. It started start really easy. And then I woke up from the dream, depressed and everything, and kind of melancholy. And then I realized that the, the white pickup, even though I didn't see the at the time, I, in the dream, I didn't see it as the RV. It was the white pickup on my RV. And so if, if I, I kind of thought about the, the symbolism of it is that the, because I wouldn't do the, um, because I couldn't get in to the cool, um, movie studio job, I had to get back in my homeless mobile <laughs> and hit the road. I don't know. I, I'm just guessing. And again, you know, I, I thought like maybe it was, um, you know, Satan giving me a, a nice, uh, you know, uh, dreams before you wake up in the morning, a little kick in the nuts as, as you sometimes might get if you ha have that observation. Um, but it could just be like my own uh, fears playing out, as I said. I don't know. All right, so uh, I noticed here, because um, I had noticed this body of water here, which I had never seen up here before, because uh, usually it is so dry up here, and I can't believe that there's a thing of water there. But then I just also noticed over here, there appears to be something on the ground. Maybe it's a um, ceremonial 
a circle of some kind. I'm going to start the sentence off with, I was invited up to Thailand by a master monk of the High Temple. I don't know what I'm going to say next. Okay, here it is. Well, believe it or not, I would really like to get out just to experience something different. I haven't traveled in so long. It's been over 10 years since I've been to Europe. And I've been to Alaska, and I've been to Florida, and I've, but I really haven't traveled the States that much. I mean, I drove through Arizona and all that on the way from, from back from uh, Florida when I was stationed there in the Navy. But uh, I really haven't uh, done any traveling since. I've basically been holed up here in LA. And uh, I would love actually to go and check out, I mean, especially after all that I've heard and I've seen what kind of people these are. Who I don't, I don't, I couldn't care less what anybody thinks Christian or not about these Buddhist monks. These are excellent people. And uh, if I had to choose who the Lord favored, some of the Christians that I've met are these Buddhist monks who are not Christians. I choose the monks, even though I myself know that no man shall be saved, but that he calls upon the name of Jesus Christ for his salvation. Yet I say thus. Uh, my trusty steed, my trusty home on wheels, it waits for me. Well guys, I still have this baby, even though I have my luxury condo. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, I thought about selling it and then I had a event where something went wrong. Oh yeah, the bed that I bought turned out to uh, make me so sick that it lasted for three days afterwards. I slept on it one time and I had to sell it and um, it turned into a big fiasco. And when that happened and I, and I had already planned to sell, sell my RV, I decided, whoop. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe not. Maybe keep this baby, because in my life, I don't know what can go wrong, and it could be a situation very easily where I do not have the money for the rent, and back out on the street. Welcome to your life, Richard Bruce. Master Monk commented that I don't have a breathing heart. I, I forget what his words were. He is, his heart is not breathing, was his saying. He said, I am too focused on my own thoughts. He's probably right. And I just healed this little sick boy that highest master monk had brought along with an older man that was also ill. And when she heals, she leaves her body, I think. And so then she healed this little boy and, and then it leaves her in a state of, uh, she uh, has a high fever and her body's very hot and she has blood coming out of her nose. And this happened several times, even like a little blood coming out of her mouth. And uh, now, from the last I've heard, uh, they were trying to cool her down, and all the monks were praying for her. And but the uh, but the little boy recovered, and he had never stood up and talked before. And he stood up and talked, and he was very hungry. And they brought him into the kitchen, and he started eating. So check it out, she just healed this little boy. And. Master Monk was so moved, the, not the highest master, but master of the, I call it master of the high temple, because it doesn't, doesn't go by a name, it just goes by master or teacher. And um, so I call him master of the, of the high temple, because his temple is high up on the mountain. And uh, he was moved to tears, and he was very worried for Miss Anna. And uh, I am a, uh, I was moved to tears as well, reading the description that uh, Master Scribe P, Kun P, uh, gave to me, and so uh, it's pretty interesting what's happening. 
So then couldn't Pete ask the boy, do you remember how Miss Anna healed you? And he said, I like Miss Anna. And then he said that he saw, he didn't know what happened. He just, she held his hand. They both went to sleep and then he woke up and he was hungry. And then he says, I saw in a dream and there was a woman with golden armor, okay? A woman with golden armor, yeah. And she had a big sword. And he says he saw her by a water of some kind. And she said for him to go into the water. And then couldn't be asked the boy about 10 years old, he said. He said, was the woman in the golden armor with the big sword, was it Ada? And he said, yes, it was Ada. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm thinking, maybe she's an angel. That's what it is, she's, she's an angel. Because angels are seen having a big sword. And uh, so we know that that's, that's a feature of angels, and maybe that's what she is. She's like an angel in a, in a in human life, but she's, she somehow retains some of her powers as an angel. And she's a woman, and the, and, the, and the woman that he saw was Anna. So it's pretty interesting what's happening.